Almighty God, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sins and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of all mortals. So he shall startle many nations Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of the ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our injuries. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we, like sheep, are gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of the people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near at hand, and there is none to help. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so, so far from my salvation, from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, and by night also, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebearers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their head, heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But it is you that took me out of the womb and laid me safe upon my mother's breast. On you was I cast ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, to, near at hand, and there is none to help. Mighty oxen come around me, fat bulls of Bashan, close in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart has become like wax melted in the depths of my body. My soul is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaves to my gums. You have laid me in the dust of death. For the hounds are all about me. The pack of evildoers close in on me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, 
my poor life from the power of the dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild oxen. You have answered me. Be not far from me, for trouble is near at hand, and there is none to help. A reading from Hebrews chapter 4, Jesus, the great high priest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek.
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the place, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat on upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests 
along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. He was dead, and I still can't believe it. I kept on hoping it was all a bad dream, that any moment I'd wake up and find we were back together again. There on the mountainside as he preached to the crowd, there in the boat as he stilled the storm, there on the road as he healed the sick, and there in the upstairs room as we shared supper, but I didn't wake up, and I knew then it was no dream, it was real. Yet still I couldn't accept it. I was waiting for another miracle, waiting for him to come down off the cross and wipe the smiles off their faces, waiting for God to do something anything to put a stop to this madness. I still can't understand it. Why did he have to die? Why waste such a beautiful life? It doesn't make any sense to me, but it did to him. That's the extraordinary thing. He warned us of it often enough, told us it was to happen even said we should welcome it. Well, it's happened now. It's over. I witnessed his last gasp. I heard his last cry. I watched them drive the spear into his side. I was there when they cut him down, limp and lifeless. And I saw the stone rolled against the tomb. I still
still can't believe it. But I've seen it with my own eyes. He was dead. Oh, 
is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. O my people, O my church, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? Testify against me. I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and important, have mercy upon us. I led you through the desert 40 years and fed you with manna. I brought you through tribulation and penitence and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. What more could I have done for you that I have not done? I planted you, my chosen and fairest vineyard. I made you the branches of my vine. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink and pierced with a spear the side of your Savior. Holy God, holy and immortal, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, and you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I scorched your enemies and brought you to a land of freedom. But you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. I gave you the water of salvation from the rock. But you have given me gold and left me to thirst. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys of the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on the cross. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. My peace I gave, which the world cannot give, and washed your feet as a sign of my love. But you draw the sword to strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. I offered you my body and blood, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I sent the spirit of truth to guide you, and you close your hearts to the counselor. I pray that all may be one in the Father and me, but you continue to quarrel and divide. I call you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. Holy God, holy and strong, Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us.
God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Therefore, we pray to our heavenly father for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the church of God throughout the world for unity in faith, in witness and in service, for bishops and other ministers and those whom they serve, for Stephen and Olivia, our bishops, and the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this place, for those to be baptized, for those who are mocked and persecuted for their faith, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and the parliaments of this land, for those who administer the law and all who serve in public office, for all who strive for justice and reconciliation, that by God's help, the world may leave, live in peace and freedom. Lord, hear us. Most gracious God and Father, in whose will is our peace, turn our hearts and the hearts of all to yourself, that by the power of your Spirit, the peace which is founded on justice may be established throughout the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for God's ancient people, the Jews, the first to hear his word, for greater understanding between Christian and Jew, for the removal of our blindness and bitterness of heart, that God will grant us grace to be faithful to his covenant and to grow in the love of his name. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. Lord God of Abraham, bless the children of your covenant, both Jew and Christian. Take from us all blindness and bitterness of heart and hasten the coming of your kingdom. When the Gentiles shall be gathered in, all Israel shall be saved, and we shall dwell together in mutual love and peace under the one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe the gospel of Christ, for those who have not heard the message of salvation, for all who have lost faith, for the contemptuous and scornful, for those who are enemies of Christ and persecute those who follow him, for all who deny the faith of Christ crucified, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
Merciful Father, creator of all the people of the earth, have compassion on all who do not know you. And by the preaching of your gospel with grace and power, gather them into the one fold of the one shepherd, Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all those who suffer, for those who are deprived and oppressed, for all who are sick, for those in darkness, in despair and doubt, in loneliness and in fear, for prisoners, captives and refugees, for the victims of false accusations and violence, for all at the point of death and those who watch beside them, that God in his mercy will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Lord, hear us. Oh, Lord, Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the sad, the strength of those who suffer. Hear the prayers of your children who cry out of any trouble and to every distressed soul grant mercy, relief and refreshment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us commend ourselves and all God's children to his unfailing love and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have died in the peace of Christ, we may come to the fullness of eternal life and the joy of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. And by the tranquil operation of your perpetual providence, carry out the work of your salvation and let the whole world feel and see that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are returning to perfection through him from whom they took their origin, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
standing at the foot of the cross. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, to your church peace and concord, and to us sinners forgiveness, and everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are alive and reign, God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.